In this video, I'm going to show you how to have an object created in Maya that will have multiple material IDs to assign a material onto in UE5. So here I have a couple of objects and both of them have two material IDs, but you can expand that to three, four or more. And it's actually very simple to do with just a few things you need to keep in mind as you create these. So let me show you how. I'm going to show you a couple of examples so that way you know how to deal with them. And it's primarily going to be having a mesh that's made up of multiple objects or having a single mesh, but then assigning specific materials to the component level, to the faces of that one single mesh. First, I'm going to show you how to deal with uh, when your object is made up of multiple meshes. So here I have a simple mesh and it's made up of two objects, but it will work for if you have more than two, of course. And the key to this is having multiple materials assigned to these meshes, two or more. And the way you do this is uh, you create a new material and you assign it to that mesh. Open up Hypershade. And right now, this object, both of these, have the default Lambert 1 assigned to both of the meshes. So I'm going to create another Lambert, Lambert 2. The type of material you create does not matter as long as it has a separate material assigned to one of the meshes. So I'm going to create Lambert. I'm going to leave it named Lambert 2. I don't need to do anything with it other than assign it to one of the objects. So let's say the bottom one, uh, I can go ahead and close this actually. The bottom one will uh, keep Lambert 1 and the top one will keep Lambert 2. So we need to assign it. To assign a material to an entire object inside Maya is simply right click, hold, actually let me raise this up. And then you go to assign existing material and choose the Lambert 1. And for this one, I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to right click, hold and assign existing material Lambert 2. And if you want to tell the difference between uh, like which material is assigned to which, of course, you can set it up by having a texture on it. Um, we're not going to do that. Uh, a really quick way is you can select Lambert 2, right click, hold graph network. So you can see the network inside the hypershade and you can do this to any material. And then uh, just assign a different color. This will only assign a color inside Maya, so that way you can tell different materials apart if you have more than two. Or if you have more than uh, two objects, usually for most of the meshes you will, you will, it will be made up of multiple meshes instead of just two. So that way you can visually tell which different material is applied to which part of the mesh. Then of course, next step is to UV your objects. So the, right now it has default UVs, so I'm gonna select them both. I'm gonna open up UV editor. And actually let's deal with them one at a time. Um, I'm going to just do a quick automatic by going to create and automatic and do the same thing for this one. Create automatic. Of course, for your object, if it's more complex, you have to UV them. Now, because we are going to be having two different materials on this, they will essentially have their own zero to one space. So if you select them both, you can see they're overlapping. But because this is material ID number two, this is material ID number one, it does not matter when the objects are combined that the UVs are overlapping. Because essentially in UE5, they are using two different materials. So they're going to be utilizing their own zero to one space. So next step is to go ahead and export. But you have an option. And the option is you can combine both of these objects right here in Maya. So they're a single object by going to mesh and combine and then exporting it, or you can keep them separate. The only caveat, if you do combine, and most of the time you will end up combining these together because it's easier to work with them and because they are going to be a single object inside UV5, it's just easier to work with it inside Maya as a single object as well. So again, we're not dealing with separate objects. We're dealing with one single object that will have a couple or more material IDs or materials that will be assigned to the single object. The only downside to combining in Maya too early on is when you open up the UV editor, you will be dealing with overlapping UVs. So you'll have to keep track which of the mesh parts contain which material ID so they can utilize the entire zero to one space. And it becomes a little harder to work this way. So you may want to keep them separate up until the export, or I'm gonna undo. So that I, keep them, I keep them separate inside Maya, and then we combine them on import inside UV5, and there's an option for that. So for this option, you can use one or the other. However, I'm going to uh, keep it simple by keeping these objects separate, but I'm going to export them into a single FBX file, and then we'll let UE5 combine these two objects for us. So I'm going to select both of these, going to go to File, 
export selection. Many of these options we already covered, but I'll just simply tell you what I am using. And if you want a more of a breakdown step-by-step -step of exporting selections, check out uh, the study that I did and all the videos that I included with it on how to export properly. So I'm gonna navigate, I'm gonna navigate into this folder and I'm going to type in mat underscore ID zero one. And then for the second object that I'll show you, I'll, um, I'll name it zero two and then we'll import both. So that one I know which one is which. The only option that I'm gonna enable here is smoothing groups, smooth mesh, and that's it. Give it a name, define the location, export selection. In UE5, I have a folder that I'm gonna import uh, these meshes into, and I'm just gonna simply take this FBX file, left click, hold and drag, and place it into that folder, and import it. I'm gonna keep a lot of these at default. I am gonna enable build nanites, even just for this test. I will generate missing collisions, uh, I am going to disable generate live map UVs. A lot of these we covered in the previous videos for the export import study. So I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna discuss any of these in detail. I do, however, want to check one option. Very important. So since we did not combine these meshes in Maya, I'm gonna do this in UE5. So like I said, you have an option, either combine them in Maya prior to export or export as a selection for all the separate meshes that will make up that once ago mesh and then combine them in UE5. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna combine meshes and I am not going to create a material. And I'm gonna disable import textures, which is usually enabled by default, but I don't want to import any textures. And it won't because we didn't associate any in Maya. All right, so the one important option that needed to be checked is combine meshes. So I'm gonna hit import. So now it's gonna be one single mesh. I'm gonna go ahead and open this up in static mesh editor and show you we now have two material IDs right here. One for the bottom part and the second one for the top part. So let me keep this open and I'm gonna navigate, actually let's place it into the level first. And you will also have two material IDs inside the details panel where we can swap these out too. And actually I don't, I'm not gonna change it here at universal level. So this is essentially you assign a material to one part and the other part for the materials that you want to show up on every single instance of this mesh being used in any level in any map. So I don't need to do that. I'm simply going to assign the materials right here at a local level for the given static mesh inside the level. So to show you what that actually looks like, I'm gonna use the starter content materials. And I'm gonna drag any of these materials. So let's assign one to this which assigned the right to the top part. And let's assign another one. Let's do this brick to the first one, which is the bottom part. Now, of course, uh, we didn't mess with UVs. We just did quick automatic, but you can see we now have two material IDs on one single static mesh. And that all was done by simply assigning a second material to one of the meshes. If you have more meshes that make up your static mesh, continue to assign all different materials that will display one texture and a second material that will display another texture. And of course you can create more, you can create a third Lambert, fourth and so on, depending however many materials that object will contain. And then you'll have different material slots for all of them. For the second option is when you have a solid static mesh, not made up of multiple meshes. So this part where I here was extruded, and let's say you have this type of mesh, but you want more multiple material IDs on it multiple materials to be applied. The way you do this is you would have to assign different materials at a component level. So right now this is Lambert 1 and let's just go ahead and assign this to everything. Just so you know, I'm gonna right click hold and I'm gonna assign existing material which is Lambert 1. It's already on there but we just did it again. Now I want this interior part right here to have a second material, Lambert 2. So I need to switch over to face component mode, select that face and then right click hold and assign existing material, Lambert 2. Now this material or this static mesh has two materials, Lambert 1 and Lambert 2. And if I export this, it will contain two different material slots. Now, before I do this, again, you have to deal with UVs. So if you open up the UV editor, let's go ahead and run automatic, create automatic. Now this face on the, in the center, it's using the same UV layout zero to one. I, however, can take this and I can maximize its space if I need it. Uh, there's a issue with textile density you will have to deal with, but that's a topic for another video. But I just want to show you that you can overlap this and it'll look like everything is overlapping in terms of using the texture, but it won't because we're using two different materials. 
So that second material, Lambert 2, those UVs can overlap the rest of them and nothing bad will happen. For the other ones, I don't want to overlap. Let's say I want to have unique UVs, but for the any additional materials, you can overlap. So let's go ahead and close this. And I'm going to export selection. File. Let's do uh, export selection. I'm going to name this 02. All the options are going to be kept the same. It's going to be exported in the same location. Export. And let me go ahead and import the second object. Here, it does not matter if I combine meshes or not because it's one single solid mesh. So I'm going to disable it and just kind of go back to default. That was important for the first option, not important for this because it's one solid object. And this does not matter if your object is already combined in Maya and then you import it here. So all the other options are going to be kept the same from the previous, from the first option. So I'm going to hit import all. So now I'm going to place it here and uh, you can see in the details panel we have one and two material ID slots. And same thing in static mesh editor. So you would assign it here for every instance in the static mesh. However, to make things quicker, just for the tutorial, I'm going to assign it at a local level. And let's go back to starter content, to materials. And I'm going to drag one, assign it right there. And let's drag another one and assign it for number two, for element one. And here we are. And let's actually uh, rotate like so. So now you have two material IDs for the second object. So this is how you create to have multiple IDs multiple materials being applied and assigned onto a single object from Maya to UE5. Now, if you want to learn how to model your own environment assets, your own custom static meshes in Maya, completely from scratch without any Maya experience to start with, then you need to get the Maya Foundation Home Static Course. It breaks everything down from complete beginning, shows you how to use Maya, then you'll learn how to model your objects using various poly modeling tools, and then it will show you how to begin UV in your objects so you can texture them. So you can get access to Maya Foundation, the home study course now. And if you want to learn UE5 completely from scratch as a beginner in just 11 hours, then download and begin watching UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1, the essential beginner's guide to getting started, creating environments in UE5 and lighting them. And you can get UE5 Fundamentals Volume 1 now.